So this video will probably come as a bit of a surprise to many of you, <laughs> but here we are. This is life, it's real life. A year and a half ago, I set out to travel North America and I didn't really know what I would find along the way. I just wanted to get out there and travel. And somewhere along the way, I ended up falling in love with the Western United States. The spaces, the wilderness, the nature, the beauty of it all. And I started dreaming up this little dream <laughs> that I think, you know, many of you can probably relate to. I wanted to buy some land somewhere in the mountains in Montana or Wyoming, perhaps, and build a small cabin and live there. And I spent a good few months pursuing this dream pretty actively and looking for a place to call home in the US. But instead of staying in the United States indefinitely and making this country my home, I decided to leave. So the other week I packed up Odyssey, my truck, threw away a bunch of stuff, sold all the other things, and well, I'll come back to that in a moment. But first, I wanna talk about why I'm deciding to leave. I've been traveling full time for six years. It's been a pretty long journey. It's been amazing. Out of those six years, I spent about four traveling out of my suitcase with no fixed address, just from one destination to another, traveling and filming and working, meeting amazing people along the way, but without a sense of home and without really any rest or any breaks in between. That's what I needed at the time, you know? That was the phase of my life that I was in. And then I got Odyssey. And Odyssey, <laughs> I've had her for just over two years, two and a half years now. And Odyssey was supposed to come into my life and become a kind of home, a home on wheels. Something that would give me a sense of stability, security, home. And she did that very well for a while until even that became a little bit too little. I don't know if I'm just getting older. I don't know if it's like a 30s thing or if I just maxed out on my travel credits. I don't know what it is, but since the beginning of this year, I've really felt this profound need to build a home, make a home. I don't have to like actually build it. I mean, have a home base, have a base camp. I'm just so ready to have a base camp and to structure my life a little bit differently. I still love travel, don't get me wrong, but I just really feel like I need to like have my own shower cabin with my own soap and shampoo. It's as simple as that. I'm not even exaggerating. So if you asked me five months ago, I probably would have told you that that house, that home, that shower cabin will be in the United States. I probably would have told you, yep, yeah, Montana, Wyoming, like Idaho, those are the places that I want to settle in. But things change. <laughs> things change. And there's really good reasons for that. So first of all, I got a pretty good reality check when I started looking around for places to buy. It's completely unaffordable. How can anyone buy property in the United States? It's ridiculous. I knew that, of course, buying property is a big investment, but real estate prices in the United States are so prohibitive that there is absolutely no way that I would be able to afford buying anything like what I dream of. There's just no way that I can spend half a million dollars, $600,000 on a plot of land with a house on it. It's completely unrealistic. And honestly, that's a pretty hard reality check. And of course there's other options, right? You could buy a piece of unimproved land and build on it. And that was an option for me theoretically. But to be quite honest with you, I am not in a mental state right now that would allow me to spend all that time, energy, and money on building a house. It's a process that takes so much time and so much mental energy that I just, it's not something I can handle. I have been feeling a slow return of the burnout that I experienced late last year. 
And I think, you know, jumping into a huge house building project right now would be pretty bad for my mental health. I just don't think I am there right now. Not now. Maybe things will change next year, who knows. But I do know for sure that right now I just need to protect my own head and my own headspace and my own health. Naturally, there's also the option of renting, <laughs> but <laughs> you may know something about this. I mean, Airbnb is great at all, but unfortunately, the huge boom in short-term rentals, especially in places like Montana and Wyoming, has meant that renting places long-term is extremely difficult and the prices are very prohibitive. Airbnb has very much ruined the long-term rental market in places like Montana. It has. And so that's not really an option either. So once I really took a good and honest look at all those things, I realized that, you know, this dream that I had of moving here is simply not something I am able to take on right now for reasons of a financial nature, for reasons of um, a mental health nature, for a lot of practical reasons, essentially. So once I realized all those things, I also realized that I need to come up with a plan B. And I did. But plan B involved shipping my truck back home, back to Europe. So in early 2022, I shipped my truck from Europe to Mexico. I then drove this truck all the way to Alaska, to the Arctic Ocean, and then all the way down the West Coast via the Pacific Ocean, all the way down to Baja in Mexico, and more recently, you've watched me drive it all the way to the Atlantic coast here in the Eastern United States. Odyssey has been my friend and my companion and my home on wheels throughout this time. And as much as I would love to keep her here, there is one legal problem with my truck. And that is, if you bring a foreign registered car as a foreigner, into the United States, you can only keep it here for a year. So if I put all the time that Odyssey has spent in the United States together, it comes out to just under a year. That means that Odyssey has to leave the United States. Otherwise, I could get in trouble and I really don't want that. So here's what it looks like to ship your car to another continent. It's official. These are the last 10 miles that I'll drive in Odyssey in the United States. And this is after a year and a half that I spent in North America, after about 50,000 miles <laughs> that I drove here. <sighs> oh, really feels like the end of an era. shady <laughs> but there's containers everywhere and I guess this will be one of the containers that Odyssey will end up in you want to go inside for Odyssey to be shipped from New Jersey to Europe with a German shipping agency who works with this American counterpart. Everything had been organized in advance, so the day I dropped off Odyssey, I just had to head to their office, sign a few final documents, and give the keys to my truck to a total stranger, trusting and hoping that I'll see her again in a distant land in the not-so-distant future. Hey, buddy. Where did it go? Where did it go, buddy? Huh? Where did it go? So that's it. So here we are. Odyssey is already on a container ship crossing the Atlantic Ocean, which is so wild. And she should be arriving in Europe in a few weeks from now. Meanwhile, Vilk and I are here on the East Coast. But that's about to change as well. 
So I know this video is a little bit different from the videos that I normally make, but I just really wanted to give you this update and be honest with you about, you know, the reasons why I'm leaving the US. It's, they're just very practical, day-to-day, -day, ordinary reasons that I think a lot of us can relate to. And so I hope that I can continue my search for a home somewhere else that feels a little bit more accessible. All right, I guess I'll see you in the next episode. How on earth am I gonna carry this with me? Okay, buddy. Bon voyage. <laughs> the wait is killing me. It still hasn't arrived and I don't know if it will. Hey, if you'd like for your name to appear in these credits or if you'd like to get early access to all of my YouTube videos or if you'd like to get access to my making off slash behind the scenes videos for every single film that I publish on YouTube, you may want to subscribe to my Patreon community. There's loads of different perks. Patreon is where I usually post my early life and travel updates, where I make loads of exclusive content and we get a chance to connect on live calls as well. It's a really, really great community. And uh, yeah, if you'd like to see more of me, this is the link somewhere here on the screen. Anyway, see you in the next video. <laughs>